we're going to move directly to member statement. I'll recognize the member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Speaker, earlier this month, I joined the Minister of Long-Term Care for a tour of the construction site of the Wellbrook Place, our new state-of-the-art long-term care home on Speakman Drive in Mississauga Lakeshore. When it is open this fall, it will be the largest long-term care home in Ontario, giving 632 new residents a modern, safe and comfortable place to call home. It will meet the latest standards for long-term care design and safety, including private bedrooms and an enhanced HVAC system, special units with care for people with advanced dementia, and dialysis program will support residents living with kidney disease. Specialists from the Trillium Health Partners will operate these programs so that, so that the residents with complex needs get the care they need right at home without unnecessary visits to hospitals or emergency rooms. Future phase of this project will include a new health service building, the first residential hospice in Mississauga to be built and operated by Heart House Hospice. And I want to thank Tess Romaine and her team at Partners Community Health for all their work on this project. And I want to thank the minister for this historic investment of $6.4 billion in the largest long-term care build program in Canadian history, including 1,100 in new upgraded beds in Mississauga Lakeshore alone, more than any other riding in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Today, I rise to share a message that my offices and I hear from our constituents in our riding and across the province every day. The impact and effects of the rising cost of living, both short-term and long-term, are harmful and hurtful in so many ways. The struggle to make ends meet, to raise a family, to be safe, warm, and fed with a place to call home should not be this tough for so many. Affording and maintaining basic needs should never take over the quality of one's life or health, physically or mentally. We hear the stories of families, friends, neighbours and community members who have exhausted all options, made every call and find themselves with nowhere to turn. We hear their current situations of unstable living conditions, lack of mental health supports and long wait lists due to underfunding. We bear witness to these conditions in our communities, in parks, schools, healthcare settings, workplaces and homes. Deplorable government policies and budget constraints that hinder the very programs and people who have the solutions. Solutions that can change lives and reverse some outcomes. We feel the effects when we see these programs close due to funding, wait lists growing even longer, and social service rates not meeting today's living expenses, including shelter, food, and health care. I call on this government to listen, learn, and fund these critical solutions. Thank you. Next member's statement. The member for... Yes, that's what I meant. Windsor Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for Brent for Brent. Uh, our, our government knows that a safe Ontario is a strong Ontario. Last week in my constituency, I had the tremendous honour of attending my first Windsor Police Service badge ceremony as the MPP for Windsor Tecumseh on behalf of Solicitor General Michael Kurzer. I was able to congratulate Windsor and Amherstburg's 11 new constables who have selflessly dedicated their lives and careers to keeping our residents safe and our community secure. Led by Chief Jason Belair, the Windsor Police Service embodies all the best of their motto, honour and service, through integrity, innovation, respect and professionalism. Speaker, I share Chief Belair's enthusiasm for our government's recent announcement in support of the brave men and women who serve as Ontario's first and last line of defence by removing key barriers in entering the profession Local police services across Ontario will better reflect the diversity of our great province at large. And to the 11 newest recruits and those still to come, we thank you, we honour you, and we wish you well as you do us proud in your service to us. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next member statement, the member for Timiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I'd once again like to make the House aware of conditions on the Trans Canada two lane highway outside of, around Inglehart. Just a brief recap in the last month, a head on collision with two transports, a, high, a school bus was forced off the highway by a transport, and we have two documented conditions of transports passing each other and forcing other people off the road. But this week, something happened that we'd never heard of before. It's seeding time in Timiskaming. There are lots of farm equipment on the highway. Thank you for our farmers for doing all the work they do. But this week, a tractor was on Highway 11 and a transport passed it on the right, on the gravel shoulder. It's amazing that that didn't cause a major accident. I've spoken with the ministry, minister about this. This isn't a partisan issue, not at all. We all care and we, we want the highway safer. Something needs to be done to make sure that aggressive drivers of all kinds, but especially transports, respect others on the road. And finally, I would like to express my condolences to the family of someone who uh, lost their lives on Highway 11 this week for another reason, another danger in Northern Ontario. Uh, a vehicle hit a moose, the highway was closed, and someone tragically lost their life. Our condolences to the family, and please be careful on Thank the roads. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Glengarry Pleshcott Russell. Madam, La Madam Speaker, on this week of National Police Week, I would like to thank first responders in my constituency, but also all over the province. As you know, we've lived a tragic situation in my constituency last week in Bourget, in the municipality of Clarence Rockwood. The ambush that caused one officer to lose their lives is unex uh, unexplainable. Our thoughts are with the family, friends, colleagues of Sergeant Mueller and with everyone that was affected by this event. I would like to thank the members of the paramedics of, uh, of Prescott Russell, all those people who went on site, the people we call first responders, who put their lives on the line to help their colleague. We will never understand how hard it can be to live with memories of that kind of situations because most of us will never have to live such an, an experience. When I came back from Toronto last Thursday night, after five hours on the road, I had a lot of time to think, Madam Speaker, and I thought about all my friends, parents, kids, and all those first responders police officers, firefighters, paramedics who put their lives on the line every day to help our constituents. I would like to thank them. Thank you for your incredible work. Thank you. Member for Sudbury. Mr. Speaker, I, I've talked several times uh, about Sudbury and the urban myth of it being the moonscape where they trained uh, NASA scientists and, and uh, pleased to, to find out that this year is actually the 50th year of regreening our city. My life seems to chart the course of the beginning of Sudbury. The super stack was, was finished in 1971, the year that I was born. In 1973, VTAC was formed. That was the Vegetation Enhancement Technical Advisory Committee, which we now just call the Regreening Advisory Committee. In 1978, that's when the real work happened. I was seven years old. I remember watching out the window as helicopters, the first time I ever saw a helicopter in real life, helicopters were bringing lime to the rocks. I've talked many times in the past about the rocks in Sudbury being scarred black and growing up thinking that rocks naturally just turn black if they're exposed to the air. The same way that a pop can would rust if it was exposed to the air. I didn't know it was because of pollution. I didn't know it was because of acid rain. And so I would watch these workers all around MCTV, the new CTV station, spreading lime on the rocks, planting small shrubs. I have photos of my family and I going out to plant little seedlings that are now taller than I am. It's an interesting experience, Speaker, when you think that when I was trained at Bell Canada to run drop lines, they told me not to worry about running through trees because in, tr in Sudbury, trees don't grow fast enough that the line would wear out before the tree grew. But now, 50 years forward, 10 million trees and shrubs have been planted. We received over 40 awards, and so the beginning of Sudbury is near and dear to my heart, Speaker. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this week marks the 78th anniversary of the Declaration of Victory in Europe. On May 11, 1945, Commonwealth commanders, including Canadians, began their first preparations to begin massive demobilization efforts to return the hundreds of thousands of Canadian warriors and heroes back home following Supreme Allied Commander Dwight D. Eisenhower's public statement that no soldier, sailor or air personnel who fought in Europe or North Africa ought to be sent to the Pacific Theatre. Also earlier this month was the 79th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands. In the weeks following the E-Day, Canadian commanders worked alongside Dutch civil authorities and communities to lay the final rest of all Canadian soldiers who fell in Germany on Allied soil. No Canadian was to be buried in Germany. This week, we pay tribute to the fallen and all veterans of the Allied forces for securing victory against Nazi Germany and their courage, devotion and sacrifices will never be forgotten by future generations and at least by all in this assembly. Mr. Speaker, God save the King. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Haldimand Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. And this is a nice follow-up to the statement from the member from Barry Innisfil. This morning, I rise to thank three men from Norfolk County who have returned from Holland as part of the Black Watch RHR Pipe and Drum Band. For two weeks, Murray McKnight, Kevin McNeely, and Chris Faulkner joined 37 others leading a tour, retracing the steps taken by Canadians in the liberation of the Netherlands. The band, developed solely for this tour, was comprised of current and former Black Watch members, other serving members, police services, and civilians from across Canada. The tour was set to coincide with the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, but was delayed three years due to the pandemic. For Port Dover resident Murray McKnight, the recent trip was a childhood dream come true. McKnight says the tour surpassed his wildest dreams and is an opportunity he will likely never be afforded again. While on tour, the band played in ceremonies and parades in small towns, and they visited each and every cemetery where Black Watch soldiers, soldiers were laid to rest. At Holton Cemetery, McKnight, McNeely and Faulkner were able to pay special tribute to William Stackhouse of St. Williams, George Dayton of Vanessa, William Graham of Port Dover, and Frank Treadley of Woodhouse, all soldiers who paid the ultimate sacrifice. In Vahu Ningangan, the men were astounded as people lined the street for three and a half kilometres at 12 deep. People hung out their windows, a picture McKnight described as surreal. It's clear the Dutch people are still very appreciative and that they have not forgotten. This memorial band, solely formed for this event, has now been disbanded. Thank you to these men, to the band, and all those who made this incredible historical journey a reality. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Glengarry, Prescott Russell. For producers of my riding, farm families are the backbone of Ontario Speaker, and Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry is no exception. I was able to visit a variety of ag producers in my riding. The few I was able to visit were Cornerstone Organics, the first organic aquaponics operation in Ontario, helping our local food security with their greenhouse greens. Next up, I visited Kreitzdale Farms and their state-of-the-art dairy facility operated by Calvin and Adam Kreitz to see how much technology has changed the way we farm. I finished the tour over at the Ferguson family's grain merchandising and cash crop farm at Glen Gordon Farms in South Glengarry with a bit of help understanding the cash crop industry. This past weekend, I was able to get out and start rototilling my garden, Mr. Speaker, getting ready for planting season at my house. With the May long weekend around the corner, many people will be heading out to local garden centres like Marlin Orchards or Fines Home Hardware to get their flowers, vegetables and other gardening essentials. With the recent sunny weather, after weeks of rain, our farming community is working day and night to get the crops in the ground. I encourage everyone to be vigilant and give farm equipment the space they need to manoeuvre safely on our local roads. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
I would like to pay tribute to an honourable member of the Bowmanville community this morning, an individual who has served our nation as a pilot and a military officer, a parliamentarian and a statesman, but most importantly a man who has proudly served the riding of Durham and someone I am pleased to call a mentor and a friend. Last month, the Member of Parliament for Durham, the Honourable Aaron O'Toole, announced that he will be leaving the House of Commons at the conclusion of the spring session. Aaron O'Toole, the son of one of my legendary predecessors, John O'Toole, served as our MPP in this legislature from 1995 to 2014. Aaron grew up in Port Perry and Bowmanville, Bowmanville before enrolling in Kingston's Royal Military College at the age of 18. Upon graduating from the RMC in 1991, Aaron O'Toole was commissioned as an officer in the Air Command in 1995, serving as an air navigator while serving at 12 Wing in Shearwater, Nova Scotia, and was awarded the Sigorsky Helicopter Rescue Award for rescuing an injured fisherman at sea and was then promoted to the rank of captain. Following his military service in 2000, Aaron went on to practice law after getting his law degree, earning his law degree in 2003. He is championed as a parliamentarian after being elected in the by-election in 2012. Many great causes. He served as a cabinet minister and most recently as leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition in Parliament. It is my pleasure to recognize both the Honourable Aaron O'Toole and his father John today for their lifetime of selfless service to Canada. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.